Hello, Foxes. Today I'm sharing a book with you titled Ben and Jerry's Ice Cream Manufacturers. The really cool thing about this book is that I can say I have been to this factory and taken a tour of Ben and Jerry's, which is located in Ver Waterbury, Vermont, and had some samples and toured around the actual ground of the, the factory. This book is written by Joanne Mattern. Born in Brooklyn, Ben and Jerry's homemade ice cream has been pleasing customers since 1978. It is one of the most famous products to come from Vermont. However, Ben and Jerry are not from Vermont. They are from New York. In fact, they were born just days apart in the same hospital. Ben and Jerry met as young boys long before they became successful business partners. Bennett Cohen was born on March 18, 1951 in Brooklyn, New York. His parents were Irving and Francis Cohen. Ben had an older sister named Alice. His father worked as an accountant. Ben's mother stayed home to care for the children. Jerry Greenfield also began his life in Brooklyn. He was born four days before Ben on March 14, 1951. Jerry's parents were Malcolm and Mildred Greenfield. Jerry had an older sister named Ronnie. He also had a younger brother named Jeff. Jerry's father worked as a stockbroker. His mother took care of the household. Both Ben and Jerry loved food from the time they were young boys, but their eating habits soon made them overweight. As a result, Ben was teased at school. Jerry's classmates teased him about his weight too. Today, Ben and Jerry scoop shops operate in more than 25 countries throughout North America, Europe, Asia, and Australia. A new friendship. When Ben was young, his family moved to the town of Merrick on Long Island in New York. Jerry also grew up in Merrick. The two boys lived just a few miles from each other. Ben and Jerry went to different elementary schools. They finally met in 1963 at Merrick Avenue Junior High School. The boys were in the same seventh grade gym class, yet because they were overweight, neither Ben nor Jerry was very athletic. One day, the boys had to run around the school track. The teacher thought they ran too slowly. He threatened to make them run around the track a second time. But Ben felt this was unfair. He argued that another run would not make them run faster. Jerry liked Ben's way of thinking. The two boys began spending time together. Yet officials soon thought the school was becoming too crowded. So the next year, Ben and other students attended Brookside Junior High School. Ben and Jerry have stayed friends throughout all their years in school and business together. School days. In 1966, Ben and Jerry both entered Calhoun High School on Long Island. There, their friendship grew. The boys spent a lot of time together. They liked driving around in cars and hanging out at the local pizza parlor. Though they were best friends, Ben and Jerry were very different. Jerry was a, hard stu was a great student. He studied hard and got good grades. Ben was also smart, but he did not like school. He was not interested in doing what the teachers told him, and he did not want to study subjects he didn't like. Because of this, Ben's grades were not as good as Jerry's. Both boys graduated from high school in 1969. Jerry graduated third in a class of more than 600 students, and he was awarded a National Merit Scholarship. After high school, Jerry attended Oberlin College in Oberlin, Ohio. He thought he wanted to become a doctor, so he took classes to prepare himself for medical school. Ben was not interested in college, but his parents wanted him to have a good education. Ben did not want to disappoint them, so he chose to attend Colgate University in Hamilton, New York. 
drifting around. Ben struggled at Colgate. He learned he did not like college any better than high school. He thought his classes were boring. So in 1970, Ben left college. After that, Ben did many different things. He traveled to California. Then he visited Jerry at Oberlin. Ben also worked at the Pied Piper Ice Cream Company in New York. After a while, Ben decided to give college another try. In 1971, he entered, entered Skidmore College in Saratoga Springs, New York. There, Ben learned how to make pottery and jewelry. To help pay for these classes, Ben held several jobs. He worked at Ann's Coffee Park Diner. Ben also mopped floors at a department store and he mopped floors at a restaurant called Friendly's. Ben liked his art classes. Still, he only stayed at Skidmore for one year. In 1972, Ben moved to New York City, New York. There he held many different jobs. He never liked working at one place for too long. Ben worked the night shift at a hospital. He also delivery, delivered pottery wheels. He even drove a taxi. Ben was a creative person. Later in life, he used his ideas to help turn Ben and Jerry's into a successful business. Then in 1974, Ben got a new job. He was hired to teach crafts at Highland Community School in Paradox, New York. Highland was a school for troubled teenagers. There, Ben taught the student pottery, photography, and silk screening. He also helped them write and create a short movie. Finally, Ben had found a job he enjoyed, a tasty idea. Meanwhile, Jerry did well at Oberlin. He graduated in 1973. However, his grades were not good enough to qualify for medical school. So Jerry got a job in a laboratory in New York City. In 1974, he tried again to get into med medical school, but once again, Jerry was not accepted. Soon after, Jerry fell in love with a woman named Elizabeth Scary. Elizabeth was a nursing student. After graduation, she was offered a job in North Carolina. Jerry decided to follow Elizabeth there. He got a job in North Carolina too, but by 1977, their relationship ended. That same year, the school where Ben worked closed. Ben and Jerry decided it was time to start in a new direction. They planned to open a business together. Jerry said, since we love to eat, we immediately thought of food. So the two friends decided to open an ice cream parlor. Ben and Jerry's love of ice cream made the choice for their business together obvious. Off to Vermont. Cohen and Greenfield knew they had a lot to learn before opening their business. So they visited many ice cream shops. They also learned how to make ice cream. The two friends found a correspondence course through Pennsylvania State University. They split the $5 it cost to take the class. Greenfield studied the science of ice cream and Cohen experimented with recipes. They even got help from a professor at the University of Vermont. From experience, Cohen and Greenfield knew that college students loved to eat ice cream. So they decided to open their store near Skidmore College. At that time, there were no ice cream shops in Sarasota Springs. Cohen and Greenfeld thought the lack of competition would help them succeed. Then Cohen and Greenfield faced a big problem. Someone else opened an ice cream shop in Sarasota Springs. Cohen and Greenfield decided they should open their business somewhere else. So they searched for a different college town. Cohen and Greenfield eventually settled in Burlington, Vermont. Burlington is a small city on the shores of Lake Champlain. The University of Vermont is located there. Today, the main ben Burlington Ben and Jerry scoop shop is located on Church Street. Hard work. The original scoop shop was open from 1978 to 1982. Next, Cohen and Greenfield had to raise money. They needed it to buy equipment and run their business. Cohen and Greenfield borrowed $4,000 from the bank. Cohen's father also lent them some money. 
Ben and Jerry's Homemade Ink was incorporated on December 17, 1977. Soon after, Cohen and Greenfield found a place to start their ice cream shop. It was an old gas station, but they thought it was a good location. Even though the location was great, the building was in terrible shape. The roof leaked and the ceiling was falling down. It was the middle of winter, so the floor was covered in ice. Cohen and Greenfield worked hard to fix the building. They asked their friend, Daryl Mullis, to help them. Mullis agreed to do the work. His payment was free ice cream for life. The two friends also worked hard to create great ice cream. Cohen had a very bad sense of taste. He could only taste foods with strong flavors. So Greenfield created recipes with more flavor than any other ice cream available. Cohen also liked big chunks of chocolate, nuts, and fruit in his ice cream. Greenfield added those ingredients to their recipes. Cohen and Greenfield's ice cream was delicious. They used the best ingredients they could find, but premium ingredients were expensive. So the friends barely had enough money left to feed themselves. Their diet consisted of ice cream, saltine crackers, and canned fish. Scooping success. The first Ben and Jerry's homemade ice cream shop opened for business on May 5th, 1978. For the first day, they advertised buy one, get one free. Small cones sold for 55 cents. The store was crowded with people. They loved the rich tasting ice cream that came in unusual flavors. So many people came to buy ice cream that Cohen and Greenfield ran out after just a few days. To keep up with the demand, they had to buy a new ice cream hardener. This allowed them to freeze larger quantities of ice cream faster. At first, Cohen and Greenfield each worked about 100 hours a week. Still, they wanted their business to be fun, so they organized exciting events in the community. One popular event was called Fall Down. There, Cohen and Greenfield held contests for eating, ice cream eating, stilt walking, frog jumping, and more. The two friends wanted their customers to enjoy coming to their scoop shop too. So they showed fruity movies on the wall of the building next door. On May 5th, 1979, customers helped them celebrate their first year in business. That day, Cohen and Garf Greenfield handed out free ice cream cones. Many Ben and Jerry scoop shops still celebrate free cone day in honor of the company's anniversary. Pint size plan. In just a few months, Cohen and Greenfield had created a very popular product. Soon, restaurants asked if they could stock Ben and Jerry's ice cream. In January 1979, Cohen and Greenfield began delivering large cartons of ice cream to restaurants. Cohen drove the cartons around Vermont and New York in a car, but he couldn't keep up for long. The partners soon took an, out another loan for their company. This time, they were able to borrow $30,000. With it, they, operate, they opened a factory. Though they could make, there they could make enough ice cream to meet demand. They also bought a delivery truck. Ben and Jerry's began offering factory tours in Waterbury, Vermont in 1986. Today, these tours remain a popular attraction. Next, Cohen and Greenfield decided to offer their ice cream to grocery stores. In 1980, they began selling eight flavors in pint-sized cartons. To keep up with demand, they opened another factory in 1981. Soon, people all over the country wanted Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Other people even started their own Ben and Jerry's scoop shops. They paid Cohen and Greenfield to use the company's name and ice cream. In June 1981, the first Ben and Jerry's franchise opened in Shelburne, Vermont. Selling pints turned out to be the secret to Cohen and Greenfield's success. Giving back. Cohen and Greenfield liked running their business in a way that treated their employees well. They believed the highest paid employees should not earn more than five times what the lowest paid earned so all employees are, were fairly compensated. 
employees enjoyed numerous benefits too. These included daycare at work and good health plans. Employees also shared 5% of the company's profits and they received three free pints of ice cream every day they worked. Cohen and Greenfield also wanted to give back to the community. So they thought of ways to give back through normal business activities. One idea was to help open special scoop shops that gave jobs to people in troubled neighborhoods. Then in 1985, Cohen and Greenfield started the Ben and Jerry's Foundation. This organization supports community groups throughout the United States. Each year, Ben and Jerry's funds the foundation with 7.5% of the company's profits. This is a large amount. Most companies only give about 1.5% of their profits. In 1988, Cohen and Greenfield committed their business beliefs to, the, to a mission statement. It states that Ben and Jerry's will make the best ice cream possible. It also promises the company will continue helping the community. Cohen and Greenfield were interested in ideas other than their own. They encouraged employees to share their thoughts about the company. Cohen and Greenfield continued using their ice cream to support issues they believed in. In 1988, Cohen founded a group called 1% for Peace. This group's goal is to redirect 1% of US defense budget to peace promoting projects. That same year, Ben and Jerry sold ice cream bars called Peace Pops. The packaging had a message about supporting 1% for peace. Cohen and Greenfield also made efforts to save the environment. They gave money to support environmental groups. Then in 1989, Cohen created a new ice cream flavor called Rainforest Crunch. It contained nuts that were grown on trees in the Amazon rainforest. Buying these nuts helped prevent the trees from being cut down, and some of the profits went to help native nut growers. In 1991, Cohen and Greenfield held their first annual One World, One Heart Festival. This event did more than support a cause. It encouraged others to get involved in political issues. People could get free ice cream at the event by writing postcards to their legislators. Cohen and Greenfield believed in addressing social needs while still making money. This made their company much different from most successful businesses. Later life, Cohen and Greenfield are proud they use their business success to help others live better lives. Cohen and Greenfield enjoyed many years of success at their company. In 2000, a large food company called Unilever wanted to buy Ben and Jerry's. Cohen and Greenfield agreed to sell their business. After the sale, Cohen and Greenfield continued to give their time and money to their communities. Greenfield <clears throat> remained with the company to manage the Ben and Jerry's Foundation. Cohen moved on to other projects. He started a group called True Majority. True Majority works to pass laws that help children and the environment. It also encourages citizens to speak up about political issues. In their free time, Cohen and Greenfield like to spend time with their families. Greenfield and Elizabeth had, re had reunited and were married in 1987. In 1988, they had a son named Tyrone. Cohen was married for a, for, for a time. He and his wife, Cindy, had a daughter named Aretha in 1990. Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield did not follow the usual rules to start their business. Instead, they did, their, they did things their own way. Today, their ice cream sales, ice cream makes many people happy, but Ben and Jerry Homemade is about more than good ice cream. It proved that a business can address social needs and be successful at the same time. Every year, Ben and Jerry's releases several new flavors. Some are sold in pints and others are sold at scoop shops. Over the years, several flavors have become huge lasting hits with ice cream lovers. Other flavors have been retired and sent to Ben and Jerry's flavor graveyard. Do you think a favorite flavor 
Do you have a favorite flavor that is no longer sold? What great flavors do you think Ben and Jerry's will invent next? Here are some Ben and Jerry's fav flavor milestones. New York Super Fudge Chunk, 1985. Ch Cherry Garcia, 1987. Chunky Monkey, 1988. Chocolate Fudge Brownie, 1990. Chocolate Chip Cookie Dough, 1991. Chubby Hubby, 1995. Fish Food, 1997. Neapolit Neapolitan Dynamite, 2006. And Americone Dream, 2007. I hope you've enjoyed my reading of this book about how Ben and Jerry's became a successful business. I don't know about you, but I think I'll have go have a bowl of ice cream. Bye, foxes.